It's shocking, isn't it, that throughout history, it's been a common practice to purposely depict others as less important or undeserving of consideration. It's a hierarchical false belief that the class one is oneself in and so relates to most is superior to all the others. That is supremacism, and it's based on ignorance and arrogance. Today, people are waking up to the understanding that rights should not be determined by such an arbitrary factor as gender or age, sexual orientation, skin color, or species. And that's how it should be. There is no them and us. We're all living beings with thoughts and feelings and desires. And all of us should be spared the chain, the yoke, and the idea that we simply exist to serve someone else. We are all animals. It's only human supremacist mindset that tries to convince us otherwise. We all share the same right to be treated respectfully. In every meaningful way, we are more the same than we are different. Animals fall in love. The elaborate ways in which animals attract partners might seem alien to us, but how different are they really from our own rituals? Just as human couples commonly hold hands to express their mutual affection, African elephants enjoy intertwining their trunks with their soulmates. Male mice whistle to impress potential mates. Male Adelie penguins collect little rocks to present to their sweethearts. Animals grieve. Just as some families pick a special day of the year to visit a loved one's grave site, animals have ways of mourning the loss of their loved ones too. Consider Hachika, a dog who left home every afternoon at precisely the same time to greet his caretaker, a Japanese university professor named Mr. Ueno, who came into a nearby train station after work. One day, Mr. Ueno didn't return. He had died while delivering a lecture. But not knowing that, every day for the next nine years, nine months and 15 days before he too died, Hachiko left home and sat by the train station, hoping his old friend would reappear. Animals speak. The other species can run circles around us with the depth and sophistication of their linguistic talents. Elephants rumble subsonically to warn other elephants a mile away of the approach of poachers. Individual members of the same bird species sing different songs based on their hometown, with regional accents no less. Dolphins not only give themselves whistle names, by which they refer to each other for a lifetime, but like many animals, they hold conversations in which one will wait for the other to finish before they chime in. Animals anticipate. Like humans, animals can anticipate when something unpleasant is about to happen. Take Clarabelle. She was a cow who was pregnant when she was rescued from a dairy farm and taken to a sanctuary. One week before her due date, Clarabelle began sneaking off, avoiding the staff and acting very strangely. After a search, it was discovered that Clarabelle had actually already given birth and had hidden her calf in tall grass. Clarabelle, who had always had her babies taken away from her over the years, had clearly worried that her child would be stolen again this time, and so had tried to hide her. At the sanctuary, for the first time ever, she was able to raise her calf in peace. Animals play. Anyone who has watched a cat pounce on imaginary targets, put their siblings in paw holds, or delight in high-speed pursuits around the house, knows that cats play. But did you know that rats giggle when they're tickled? 
and cows can play fetch. And crows, they play tricks on other animals just for a laugh. Having fun is a universal pastime. Animals feel pain. One might ask, why is the agonized bellow of a bull being stabbed in the bullfighting ring any less anguished than that of a human victim attacked in an alleyway? When monkeys in laboratories are prodded and poisoned, their screams are as real as those that humans would make in the same situation. Experimenters use monkeys and mice and other animals in pain studies simply because they know they feel pain. Animals are empathetic. Consider the experiments in which caged monkeys have starved themselves for days rather than receive a food reward for shocking another monkey. Or consider that animals from bats to dogs and birds will feed, stay beside, and look after other animals in trouble. The Cambridge Declaration on Consciousness, signed in 2012 by a prominent group of neuroscientists and ethicists and endorsed by Stephen Hawking, declares that humans are not unique in ways that matter. The declaration states, non-human animals, including all mammals and birds and many other creatures, also possess the very same neurological substrates as human beings. Animals, of course, are conscious beings. They understand cause and effect relationships. They feel hunger and fatigue. They form abstract thoughts, solve problems, use language, make tools, and exhibit long-term memory. Yes, animals feel anxiety and fear and pain, just as humans do. Stand on their toes or their tentacles, snatch their offspring from their breasts or their nests, and they feel the same way about it as would you or I. The question is, how should knowing all this inform our behavior? After all, isn't it imperative that if what we do harms animals and even causes their deaths, shouldn't we change some of our habits? What can we do to reject this idea of a false hierarchy of life?